Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch and doing some catch-up on the end of the last week. I was out on vacation, traveling back, then Easter holiday happened, so we're getting these things a couple of days late. One of the announcements that happened in that time period was Flax Engine, released Flax Engine 110. Now, Flax Engine is one of those, like, underdog stories that I'm rapidly cheering for. I, I absolutely love Flax. It's mostly the work of a single developer. There's a bit of a community behind it, but if you can think about it, this is as close as you're going to get to an indie version of Unreal Engine. It is actually very similar in Unreal Engine in a number of ways, including the programming language you use as well as the licensing and the way you pay for it. So we'll get back to that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and show you Flax in action. So if you head on over to the launcher, you'll find over at the engine, add version 110 is available. If you're wondering what platforms Flax runs on, it used to be Windows only, but they have since added Linux and Mac support as well for the editor, which is very cool. It deploys on a number of platforms as well. We're going to go ahead and load up the third person shooter demo. Now there's a number of demos available. I'll show you them when we get to the open source part of this program. But first, I'm just going to show you quickly what Flax is all about. So you can see the simple editing environment. You got your world scene graph over here. Uh, you've got, uh, again, complete preview of your world. We're going to find your programmability is done in the combination of things. So this is one of the areas where the similarities to um, Unreal Engine definitely are relevant here. For example, here, your, your programming, you can do C++. You can also do visual scripting, somewhat like uh, a blueprint type implementation. But this one here, you'll notice this is the script right here. We'll go ahead and we'll edit said script. And this is using C Sharp. So the majority of your game logic will be done using C Sharp. So in that way, it's actually quite similar to uh, the Unity game engine. In fact, I did a migrating from Unity to Flax guide uh, back when Unity went through, uh, we'll call them the troubles. But you can see here, th this code is very straightforward. You've got various different callbacks you've come to expect. So on initialization, when it's updated, uh, on fixed update, so that you're updating at a fixed rate as opposed to as fast as possible, and then you just do your game logic in there. Uh, you've got uh, controls that are added to your character or added to your objects in the game world. So let's head on back over to Flax itself. You'll see what I mean. So again, all of these are added controls on top. So you can add a variety of scripts and controls onto each thing. And you've got a number of different options available here as well. Uh, and then here is your, your game editing environment. Nice, um, straightforward approach. You do have material editors with material previews. Uh, so you can refresh them, show them that way. I'll go ahead and open one up so you can see there are material editors. You can play around with them in real time. This is a very simple material, but it gives you an idea of what is there. And then we got a variety of graphic effects as well. So you can see things set up for the sky and so on. We could also come up here, add in a new object here. We'll do a visual of type lighting and effect, post effects volume. And then you can see here, you've got a number of different settings here. Things like ambient occlusion, global illumination, bloom. Bloom is one of the areas where we had an update here as well. You can do your tone mapping and so on. It is a very uh, comprehensive game engine in terms of the features and functionality here. It's got a full animation system in here. You've got a variety of visual editors and so on. One of the additions that we've got here uh, in this particular release is the addition of this new output log command prompt here. So let's say if I wanted to interact with something in real time, so here is time delta frame, for example, I can click there and then I can get, so delta, delta time, Okay, it doesn't does not work where the mouse enter, and there you see the result from it. So you can actually run and interact with uh, your debug uh, process now with this new attribute system, which is pretty nice. So again, here we are on the Flax Engine website. If you want to learn more about Flax Engine itself, it is available at flaxengine.com. Now, there's not an absolute ton in this release, but we're going to go over what is there. Some neat new features like that uh, debug console. We also have uh, functionality in place for a uh, new curve editor and a couple of other things. We'll get to those in just a second. So why do you want to use Flax? Seamless C and C++ scripting. There's also visual scripting. Support for a number of platforms, including Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, iOS, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and Xbox, which is very quite cool. Real-time global illumination, etc. You've also got a uh, terrain system in here. You've got hot reload of both C Sharp and C++, integration with a variety of different online services, uh, and so on. So you can see here in terms of the pricing, so you don't pay anything for Flax, uh, but when you're successful, you pay 4% of money you make after $250,000 of earning per quarter. So it's similar to the um, $1 million you can earn in 
uh, Unreal Engine. It's just at a different granularity. So this is if you make more than $250,000 in a quarter, you have to pay 4% beyond that. Uh, and then again, all the source is available. This is not an open source engine. There is another similarity to Unreal Engine. This is a source available engine, but you'll find there actually are people in the community contributing to it, which is quite nice. And as I mentioned earlier on, it is available for Linux and Mac OS in addition to Windows. I don't think they have the launcher, however, just one of those things to be aware of. I know a lot of people hate launchers, so you probably don't mind that at all. Uh, there is decent documentation available for it as well, including manuals in C Sharp and C++, as well as just general how to use the editor and so on. Uh, and for these kind of smaller projects or <laughs> Unreal Engine a lot of times, documentation can be very lacking. So it's nice to see that this documentation is available over here. So now let's jump in and take a look specifically at what is in Flax 1.10. Not the flashes release, but there's some nice stuff in here. In total, there are 1,150 commits, including 149 pull requests. So there is definitely a community behind Flax, which is nice. Again, not open source, source available, but you can contribute to the project. Uh, in terms of new features, one of the new graphics features there is the new Bloom implementation. So this uses a new smoother rendering that provides more realistic results. It features a MIP map based dual filtering with configurable soft knee. Uh, new visuals are softer, more stable, and have wider diffusion that spreads naturally when looking at bright spots. We also have improvements to the multi blend editor with, uh, you can see the, the interaction of the feedback of how that blend will actually work. Uh, so visualizes triangulated blend space with gradients and highlights to better understand how animations are being interpolated. Uh, this accurately represents the logic that's running under the hood for animations. It gives you an idea. This is one of the features of this engine. There are a ton of animation tools available. I actually showcase how to use these in that uh, Unreal, sorry, the Unity to Flax uh, tutorial that I did if you're interested in learning more. Now, probably the biggest thing about Flax 110 is this one. And this is a behind the scenes thing. They've changed the mesh vertex format. So this is going to be a huge refactor behind the scenes, uh, complete refactor of the vertex buffers used by meshes, static and skin meshes won't use fixed vertex formats anymore. Instead, they will allow for more flexibility and fully customizable data. This has been achieved by adding the new GPU vertex layout and removing fixed format vertex dependencies in vertex shaders. Now that sounds good. What the hell does it mean? Well, it means a couple of tangible benefits. First off, you'll see right here, you have multiple different coordinate sets there. So you can now have up to four different texture channels. You have more optimal asset data. So it should be faster at, uh, after import time in terms of using your meshes. Uh, vertex data quantization. Uh, on top of that, you have support for up to 65,535 bones in skinned models, support for vertex colors on skin models, and support for non-standard mesh data formats used by the game. So uh, it's again under the hood, uh, but it's one of those things you get better performance, better functionality out of it. So it's a big change that you don't really interact with that much. On top of that, uh, we have the new animation retargeting functionality in here. So it's significant improvements to the animation retargeting in the above GIF or GIF, uh, there are various um, characters from Cinti that use different skeletons from various asset packs and play the same animation correctly. Uh, they have uh, documentation on how this animation retargeting can work. So you can see the Hulk and this woman being controlled by uh, the same set of animations. So it's a way of reusing animations across your characters. We also have some improvements to network optimizations. It has its own built-in networking, by the way. Um, so the number of performance optimizations there. So object IDs and type names used by RPC and replications are now optimized 32-bit keys. Uh, Quaternions are using quantization, which cuts average transfer rate by more than 56%. Replication system uh, will check if object data changes before sending a replication message. We also have some improvements to their Arizona framework samples. Uh, Arizona framework is an open source framework built on top of Flax for making game engines easier to work with. Uh, we touched on this one earlier on a little bit. The debug commands have been added to Flax 110. You can expose these via uh, classes, fields, methods, and properties, and then you can tweak them directly. It, it works just like the command console you would find in Unreal Engine. So you can do modifications on the fly to your code and, and hook into and interact with it. Um, so the output log is the editor window that displays the full log. Now at the bottom of the window, there is an input command field that can be used to run the commands. Again, type the commands at the very bottom right down here. I do hope they get that um, mouse click highlight thing fixed, but hey, we're on the way. Uh, and again, mentioning that Arizona framework, uh, they've also added in-game consoles uh, via one IM GUI via the Arizona framework. They also added attributes to buttons. Uh, so button attributes comes to C Sharp and C++ scripting for quick function annotations to expose them in the editor properties. Uh, this is very handy when prototype and procedural level generation systems or randomized code-based algorithms. It works with both static members
numbers and member methods at edit time and during play. The curve editor got some improvements as well. Uh, so stable zooming and panning for more robust editing. So that is uh, the heart of the 1.10 release. If you're interested in learning more, this is again, a source available project. So it is up on GitHub. Um, you can see here the Arizona framework. This is open source. This is built on top of Flax for um, providing a lot of scaffolding and logic your game might need. The number of samples are available here as well. Uh, but what you're probably most interested in is the Flax engine itself. Once again, it is under a proprietary license. It is source available. Now, interestingly enough, there are 84 contributors to this project. This is the main guy. Uh, so Mathiesto, uh, he's the, the lead behind this particular project, but it is very up to date. It's very actively developed. Uh, you see a ton of commits to each different version. And this new release happened again, the end of last week. So I apologize for being a couple days late, but you know, Easter weekend and all that. I didn't see any reason to put out a video on a week here where most of you would not see it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is Flax. Uh, this is Flax Engine uh, 1.0, or I guess it's 1.10. Um, it is a very cool engine. It's again, one of the, the underdog stories out there. Um, a very similar, I would say, to Unreal Engine in a lot of ways. It's kind of a hybrid between Unreal Engine and Unity, but more of an indie size. So if you do not want all the features and scope and all of that that those commercial engines bring, this could be an alternative for you, especially if something like Godot or Stride does not fit your stride. <laughs> so let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.